Hello, and welcome to Using Amazon Recognition with .NET 5. My name is Brian Beach, and I'm a Principal Developer Advocate with AWS. AWS offers a broad set of machine learning capabilities, as shown in this image. At the bottom, you'll find a series of frameworks and compute options focused at your machine learning expert. As we move up, SageMaker is designed to enable a data scientist to create new algorithms. And above that, you can zoom in on these AI services. These are a series of services designed to help an application developer add machine learning capabilities to an application without needing to be a machine learning expert. And so here, we'll see solutions for speech and text recognition, search, chatbots, personalization, forecasting, fraud detection, anomaly detection, and vision. We're going to focus today on computer vision and specifically on Amazon recognition. Okay, I'm now in the AWS Management Console. And I'm going to scroll down to the machine learning section and I'm going to choose Amazon recognition. This will take us to the Amazon Recognition Console where we can try a demo. And here you can see I've uploaded a picture, a sample image, and recognition has detected multiple objects in this scene. So it's found a car and a person and a skateboard. This is really easy. I simply upload my image, and recognition will generate a JSON document describing what it's found. So for example, it has found a car, and it's 98.8% .8 sure that this is a car. And then it gives me the bounding box telling me where it found this. And then you can see all the different instances of a car that it found, along with other things that it found in this picture. Moving over to Visual Studio, let's see how we could do that same thing using .NET 5. As you can see here, I've created a simple demo application using the .NET 5 framework. And I've also imported the AWS Recognition NuGet package. So let's take a look at a really simple console application to test how this works. Uh, within my main method, the first thing I'm going to do is create a client for Amazon Recognition. This will allow me to make API calls. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to call the detect labels method. This is the same method that we saw on the console. And essentially, I'm going to pass it in an image. In this case, my image is already in S3. So I simply pass the bucket and the file name within that bucket, and it will analyze the image. And then the response that I get back should include a series of labels. Those are labels of the things that have been detected within the image. And I'll write those out to the console. So very simple application here. Let's run this. Give it a second to recompile. And you can see here, we see a lot of those same items that we saw before. So the car, you see the person, you see the skateboard. I think you see a lot more detail that wasn't actually highlighted in the other image. OK, and the reason that, that we're seeing items that weren't shown in the console is for each one of these items, we get back a confidence interval. And so those ones at the top are the things that it was most confident that it was seeing. Now let's let's switch over and talk about a real world application. Let's imagine hypothetically that we are building a restaurant critic application. Okay, this is a an app that would allow users to rate restaurants and also upload pictures of their food and their experience at the restaurant. And we want to moderate the uploads. We want to make sure that the images that people are uploading are appropriate. And so I've created two simple methods here that rely on recognition to accomplish that. The first one is called is image safe. And this is very similar to what we saw before with a couple differences. Rather than just detecting labels, I'm looking specifically for moderation labels. And a moderation label is content that's likely to be inappropriate. Um, things like nudity, suggestive content, violence. And so I want to know if someone's trying to upload something that could be embarrassing. The other thing that's different is, in this case, I'm passing the input as a memory stream because it doesn't yet exist in S3. This is a new image. And so rather than finding it up in S3, I'm assuming that we've got the file locally and we're going to pass it as a memory stream. And then finally, I want to be sure that the content that's detected is truly an issue. And so I only want to flag things that recognition is 75% or greater confidence to be a problem. And then 
I just take a look at if there are any labels at all, if it has detected anything in the image that it is 75% confident that it thinks could be a problem, I will block this image. So very simple, upload the image, take a look at the response and decide if we want to block it or not. In addition, I want to redact any faces. So we've had complaints from people who are photographed in a restaurant and they didn't want their face in the application. And so we're going to go in and detect any faces and remove them. And again, this is very similar to the last two methods that we've seen, but this time we're calling the detect faces API. And again, passing in the image as a memory stream. And if we scroll down, essentially, if we find any faces within this image, we're just going to draw a, um, a solid black rectangle over the bounding box where that part of the image was found. So for each one of the faces that it finds within the image, recognition is going to return to us the coordinates that it found that face at. And I can go around and just draw a black box over each one of their faces. All right, and I'm using the system.drawing libraries to do this. And then I write that back into a different memory stream and return that as output. So let's take a look. Um, I've got two sample images that we're going to use for tests. The first is a very appropriate image, exactly what we would expect to see, uh, a scene at a restaurant with a few people having a meal. And obviously, there are multiple faces within this image. Okay. The second is a handgun, which is inappropriate and not something that we want on our site. There's no place for this here. So let's go take a look at some tests. The first one is going to test for an unsafe image. I'm essentially going to upload the handgun. And I would expect this to be false. right? This image is not safe. Therefore, it's false and should fail. The next, time, the next thing I'm going to do is upload the restaurant image. And this is safe. So I would expect this to return true, that it is safe. All right, And as we scroll down, um, I'm also going to do some tests for face redaction. So I'm going to upload that restaurant image. And in short here, as long as recognition has identified some faces, this image will be edited. And the input and output will not match. And so as long as the input and output are not equal, I can assume that some faces were detected and obfuscated in the image. And then finally, I'm going to upload the handgun again. And obviously, there were no faces within the handgun image. And so I would expect my input and output to be identical. And assuming they are, we'll let this test pass. So let's run these now. OK, you can see that they've all previously passed, but we'll let it run again. So let it go through a compilation. And then it will execute our tests. And we can see that each one of those four tests passed again, just as we expected. Returning to our slides, let's wrap up. We saw in this demo how easy it is to both moderate images and then detect faces. We also saw earlier in the demo, there's lots of other things you can do with recognition. So we could go in and detect objects in a scene. We can compare faces. You could use that to search for people in a series of pictures. You can look for text in an image. A common use of this would be reading road signs or uh, license plates in a parking lot. So there's lots of things we could do. And we saw how easy it was, just a couple lines of code, and we're able to apply these to an image and find interesting things within that image without really any knowledge at all of machine learning and how it works. So I'm sure you could think of a way to build this into your own application. With that, thank you. Again, my name is Brian Beach. I'm a principal developer advocate with AWS. And I appreciate you watching.